This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to interrupt our normal schedule because Microsoft's having a moment, and that means we're all having a moment. It's coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and this week we are taking a little bit of a side trip because Microsoft has released what they're describing as a major update to Windows 11. It is the second so-called moment update. These are the moments that appear between the feature updates, which are the version upgrades that occur typically in October every year. The first moment update to Windows 11 version 22H2 happened in November slash December. This was the one that gave us the new user interface for File Explorer, right, where we had uh, tabs and new home uh, screen and so forth. So the second moment update is actually significantly bigger. And actually, it's kind of interesting. So there's a bunch of stuff here. Um, As I record this, uh, this just happened today. So there's a little bit of a a fog of war thing. There's a couple of things here I'm a little unclear of, but I will will show you what I can show you and, and talk about what I think is happening here. So if you are... Uh, running Windows 11 22H2, um, you can go to Windows Update and you'll see a uh, preliminary version of the update, a preview version that you can up, you can just download now. You have to go get it. Uh, if you want to wait, the the stable version, the main version, the, the real version, whatever you want to call it, uh, will come out in March 2023's uh, Patch Tuesday. And that happens on March 7th. So by the time you see this, uh, you, you'll be able to get it for sure. You can go and, and seek it. Um, if you are watching this video later in the year or at some other time, uh, this will have occurred and you probably just have it. So the big change this time is something that fixes an issue that Microsoft created when out of the blue in late 2022, they switched the search icon on the taskbar into what we call a search pill. And we call it a search pill because it's basically an icon with a label that says search. So it kind of stretches it out at the time, it was the only icon that wasn't the same size of, of all the other icons. It actually lost some functionality, which is a little bit weird. Uh, but now in moment two, what they've done is they've replaced that yet again, <laughs> this time with a search box like we used to have in Windows 10. And you can see that here at the bottom of the screen. Um, you also see this really prominent Bing icon, which I'm going to get to in a moment. Um, but this is the new UI. Now, if we go into taskbar settings, the other change here is that we can change this, right? So we can hide the icon as before. We can change it to a search icon, which is the original icon, right? The the one we got in the first version of Windows 11, which is the one I would prefer, frankly. Um, they We can change it to a search icon and label. This is the pill that I was referring to, the kind of pill-shaped icon. Or we can change it to that default, which is the search box. Um, this is curious, right? So if we click this, we it brings up the search experience as before. All right, and this this what this is what used to be search highlights. So uh, actually, I probably turned that off my computer. So, but there's there's additional things over here on the right uh, related to Bing, the new Bing, or as I call it, Bing AI. And I'm sure you've heard of this. This is the Chat GPT based version of Bing that uses a chat bot to interact with users, right? So you can ask it questions, but you can also have conversations with it, which is kind of interesting. Now, I assumed with this Bing icon being here that I could run conversations with Bing from the desktop somehow. So that if I started typing here, whatever I did, um, like up here, for example, I previously typed in something Microsoft used in the demo for this product, which was, I need a five-day itinerary for Mexico City. Oddly, if if I were to select this, uh, you won't see it because it's opening on the other screen, but um, it opens a browser tab. And here's the really weird one. It opens that browser tab in the browser I chose as my default. It actually doesn't open in Edge. I assume that's a mistake. <laughs> They're probably going to fix that because they usually use these UIs to push uh, their own products. But uh, anyway, the point here is for, for what I can tell, there is no way right here to interact directly with Bing from within Windows 11. It just goes to a a browser. So you can see some of the example uh, queries they have over here and some other things you can do with Bing. But, um, you know, we'll see how that integration goes. You know, one of the big 
rumors about a Windows 12, assuming that happens, say, next year, is that there'll be deeper AI type integrations in that product. So we'll see where this goes. Um, so that's the that's probably the biggest. Well, that's why I'll call that one of the biggest changes. Um, another change here in the taskbar, if we go down to this, where it says show hidden icons, I think of this as an overflow area for your uh, tray notification icons, notification area icons. Um, so when you click that, uh, this is, believe it or not, is a new UI. Um, it's just slightly different from what was there before. The big change is that now you can reorder icons for whatever reason, which is a capability we had in previous versions of uh, Windows. So it's something they're kind of bringing back. Um, Moment 2 also adds uh, the tablet or touch optimized taskbar that we, Microsoft has been testing for a couple of years. This pro the PC I'm using is not a tablet, so I don't have a way to turn that on. But basically, uh, when you have a detachable or a tablet and you unplug the keyboard, the taskbar goes down to a very minimal strip at the bottom where you can basically just see the time and these tray icons. And there are no more icons in the middle part of the taskbar. It just gives more of the screen um, to what you're working on, with you, well, probably with your hands. Um, File Explorer has faster search, supposedly. I don't see, I don't use the home view, but it's supposed to offer recommendations here. I don't see that, but the most likely reason is that I am, of course, turning things off here. So if I were to go in and turn on some of these options, I suspect it might make recommendations. I don't use File Explorer that way, so I don't really care too, too much about that. Um, Notepad now has tabs. Now, to get this, you don't have to, you have to install Moment 2 first. Uh, but then you have to go to the store and install this update if you don't see the tab. So this this update comes to the app through the Microsoft Store. And this is basically the same app as before. It has the same exact UI, except there are tabs at the top. And of course, you can add tabs, close them. You can do it with keyboard shortcuts, with the uh, UI controls, et cetera. So that's all pretty straightforward. That's nice, though. Um, there is a, we're not going to see this on this uh, particular PC. I've signed in with a Microsoft account. But if you sign in with a uh, work or school account, which we cover or will cover uh, eventually in the accounts uh, part of this series. Um, you will see AI based recommendations for documents or files in this recommended section in the uh, in the start menu. And these are things that your coworkers and you might be working on as part of a project. It will surface things maybe uh, that other people are working on so that you can access it more easily, that kind of thing. So recommended is kind of a goofy section where they commingle recently installed applications, like you can see Microsoft Defender here, as well as uh, recently accessed documents and other files. So you can see a Word doc and some uh, image files here as well. Uh, the Windows 365 app is now generally available. It's in the store. It's not in Windows 11, so I'm not quite sure where they, this is one of the improvements. Um, there's no real reason to reload the store and look at that. But my, Windows 365, of course, is the Microsoft service that allows you to access the full Windows desktop from the cloud and stream it down to your computer. Um, if you do that in Windows 11, it's kind of interesting because it has some integration features there that you won't see in other systems. But um, it's not technically part of Windows 11, but it is now available. Um, very soon, um, this is, I would guess that this is going to take a couple of months to make its way to stable, but there is a phone link app in windows, which I have, yeah, I have not configured on this particular computer, but to date on windows 11, it's only worked with Android phones. Now they're going through a preview where they're going to let it work with iPhones. It will work with SMS, but not iMessage by the way. Um, photos, uh, phone calls, notifications, that kind of stuff. So that's cool. That's a nice little bit of integration. So you're sitting at your computer, you can respond to text messages and so forth. Um, another thing I can't show you because I don't have an NPU, which is a neural processing unit. Um, actually, almost nobody does because uh, today uh, the only uh, neural processing units you're going to see on computers are on uh, Qualcomm based, uh, ARM based computers, right? Uh, but this year, you'll see them on some AMD systems. You'll see them on some Intel systems. And I would say by the time the holiday season rolls around and then next year, certainly, uh, NPUs will be a common feature of um, of new computers. But this is a, a feature called Windows Studio. Oh, actually, it's a set of features called Windows Studio Effects. And so all those things you use when you're doing a, a work call or Zoom or Teams or whatever it is where you know your eyes look like they're looking forward, even though you might be looking in a different direction or you blur the background or camera kind of follows you around if you move around a bit. Um, these This set of features uses AI to uh, make this, uh, those features work really well, apparently. Uh, another app update, although I believe this one, I think this one is still part of Windows and doesn't require our store update, is the snipping tool. So to date, the snipping tool is one of several ways that you can take screenshots in Windows 11. In fact, we'll probably do an episode just about screenshots. Uh, 
because there are so many ways. Uh, the new version of the snipping tool also allows you to take screen recording. So you can record the entire screen. You can record a window. You can record you know, record a particular rectangle or area of the screen. Um, I'm not going to turn this on now because we're recording this for the show, but um, you can toggle this over to camera and then uh, create screen recordings uh, from the show as well, which is pretty cool. All right. What else do we got in here? I think that's, we're almost, we're almost winding down, but there's some more. So if you go into the settings app and you go to system and then power, you're going to see this new option here at the top. And this is energy recommendations. And this is kind of a an interesting initiative at Microsoft. They're doing this across products where they're trying to be lowering the carbon footprint of the Microsoft products that we use. So if you have an Xbox, you might know that they released recently released a new power management mode where it's more efficient with energy and they're doing the same with windows. And so on this particular computer, which is a desktop computer, you can see that I only have one of the five recommend <laughs> recommended uh, settings configured. Um, you could set the power mode for best energy efficiency, which I'm absolutely not going to do. Um, you could put your device to sleep after 10 minutes, which is the preferred option for energy efficiency. Also not going to do that. And then uh, turn off the screen after three minutes. Those are probably the defaults. One of the first things I do when I configure windows is go into settings and actually raise those things. I don't like the screen uh, to turn off or the device to go to sleep that quickly. Um, I did turn off my screensaver. Actually, I didn't turn it off. It was never on, but it is off. So I get a point for that. But um, I could turn all these uh, options on if I wanted to. There's some other stuff in here. Uh, there's some new accessibility features. Um, the screen reader supports Braille now, which is kind of interesting. And there's a, a voice command feature, which, as it sounds like, allows you to control the system with your voice. Um, now it works across not just Windows 11 itself, but also apps you're running on top of Windows 11 including File Explorer. So that's pretty cool too. So that is most of, or most or all, I guess, of moment two. I hate having this search bar here, but I'll, I'll leave it here for the, for the show because this, you know, I'm trying to keep this system as default as possible, but um, it is available. If you want it, you can grab it. Uh, you know, again, like I said, depending on when you're watching this, you might, you might just get it automatically. But if you go to Windows, if you don't have it, uh, which you can tell if you don't have that search box, um, you can go to Windows Update and just grab it that way. So pretty cool update um, that came out of nowhere <laughs> in some ways, uh, but it's here now and you can grab it for yourself. So thank you for watching and thank you to Club Twit members for joining. And we will have new content here every week on Thursday. And you can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt and I'm the host of Hands on Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that too. So. Check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today.